So now we're going to configure some 802.1Q trunks on a Nexus-based platform. Like I'd mentioned previously, there's not going to be a whole lot of, I call it syntactual difference, and that's a word I just made up, by the way, between how we did this in iOS and how we do it in NXOS. The one thing that you don't have to do is specify an encapsulation type again because .1Q is going to be the only supported encap on the Nexus-based platforms. So the topology that we're going to be playing with is a fairly simple one and that is the CLI. This is the topology that we'll be using. It's not anything crazy again. We're going to have just a 17K that's at the north side, the 25Ks down here at the bottom. And I've got a couple links and a couple VLANs that we're going to provision as 802.1Q trunks. We'll play with some of the knobs like switch trunk allowed list. I'll show you some of the nuances with those. But mainly I just want to show you that there's nothing to be scared of when just configuring straight layer 2 802.1Q trunks, right? It's just going to be a very, very simple process. So this is our topology. So the first device I want to play with is the 7K. So let's provision 3, 1, 3, 5, and 7 as just standard 802.1Q trunks. We won't, we won't do any switch trunk allow VLAN lists or anything like that at this point. Again, just the, the standard trunk links. So let's go over to that switch. So we're at switch 1, 2. We'll say show amp brief. The first thing you guys should notice is that by default, what we have here are routed ports, and that's because these specific ports are off the M-Series module, and the M-Series module is going to default to a routed port. So we, we, we're going to have to first change these from a Layer 3 routed port to a switch port, and that'll be the very first thing we have to do. If you don't do it, you get an error that's usually pretty indicative, hey, I need to go out there and make that you know, layer two port. So we'll, I'll show you that error message so that you guys are familiar with it as well. And notice they're all shut down. So we're gonna have to do a no shut before those links will actually come up. So what I'm gonna do, go into these ports, we'll say interface ethernet 3.1, E3.3, E3.5, and E3.7. Seven. Since we don't have any of the ports in between the 246, um, we can't actually go in there and do an interface range command, which is unfortunate because it would be a lot simpler. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit enter here. If I tried to type in switch uh, mode trunk, it's going to give us an error message saying the requested config is not allowed. That, that again is because we're defaulting to a layer 3 port. We need to come in and make these a layer 2 switch port. So I'm just going to type in switch port. And then I'll hit the up arrow and say switch mode trunk. And this time it, it does actually take that command. So lastly, we'll do a no shut. My goodness, two botched commands in a row. No shut. <laughs> we'll say show ant brief again. We see they are all up as trunks. And if we look at the output of a show interface, whoops, trunk, we can see that all are trunking and that by default, all VLANs, that being from 1 to 4094, are going to be allowed across these trunks. So what we're going to see, because we don't have any other VLANs configured, is that currently one is only going to be the one forwarding. So let's go ahead and create those VLANs. So we'll say VLAN 30, whoops, 40, and 99. I'm not going to give them any names or anything. But once we get those in there and say show in trunk, we should see that after they all actually come up, because again, the 5Ks aren't going to be configured yet, we should see those allowed and forwarding uh, along these, these trunk links. So let's go down to our 5Ks. We'll go to switch two real quick. I'll say int E11, E13, switch mode trunk. I don't have to specify just the switch port command over here because these guys default to layer two switch ports. We will throw a no shut in. Let's do a show CDP neighbor real quick. Let's just see what we're connected to. So I've got, I've got some fabric interconnects. Let's shut those down. E19 through 10, shut. Look back at the CDP neighbor. So I've got switch one, two, and then I've got switch one, three off seven and eight. So I also need to go in and say int E17 through eight. We'll say switch mode trunk. Shut. I know they're no shut, but I just like to habitually type it in. We have to do the same config on the other side, so I'm just going to say show CLI history unformatted, and I will grab this config. We'll copy it, and I'll just paste it over here. There 
all right? So my ports now should all be provisioned. I should be able to say show int trunk, and we should see that one, three, seven, and eight are all up in trunk. Yeah, I've got a port channel in there. Let's delete that. Show in trunk again. There we go. So they're all trunking. All, again, all VLANs are allowed by default. Uh, we haven't created these VLANs, so let's go ahead and create those. So we'll say 30, 40, and 99. Remember to exit out of VLAN range mode. Do the same thing over here. We'll say VLANs 30, 40, and 99. Now what we should see is that once these all come up and go through their spanning tree, again, the discarding, learning, and finally the forwarding, uh, we should see that they, those VLANs are all allowed across these individual trunks. Now, some of it will, will differ a little bit based on where spanning tree is actually forwarding. We, we will have some link or links blocking from a spanning tree perspective here. So let's just see how this initially converges and then we'll go from there. So I've got, I'm forwarding on one and five. So basically this port here and then this link here. So the 7K is not the root bridge. <laughs> we'll say show and trunk. And this guy is forwarding out 1.1 one, one currently. We'll say show and trunk. And this guy is forwarding out 1 and 3. So let's say Tear that port channel out of here as well. No MP01. So switch two is our root bridge. Hmm. Got those ports down for some reason. Let's make sure seven and eight come up. Oh, they're disabled for some reason. So let's. I could have swore I no shut them. And we should see these guys come up. Look, there it goes. Okay. So we should again, we should see it converge. What we'll probably see, because the other one is the root bridge, yeah, so now our root port has moved over to 1.7, where it was previously at 1.1. So now this is looking right. We should also see, if we said show span root, we should see, yeah, so everything's going over to switch 2 now. Uh, he, he sees switch 2 as the root bridge, and then switch 1 should as well. We'll say show span root. And he is going out three one. So switch two is currently the root bridge for all these VLANs. So what we're seeing is that each of those picked uh, the lowest cost path back to the root bridge. So we do see that indicated here. Now, what we could do also is we could prune VLANs from specific links. And I mentioned in the theory video, we could go in and actually use the switch trunk allow VLAN list. So what's kind of funny about that is, and I, I believe I mentioned this, if I were to come in, say, to int Ethernet 3.1, and say I wanted to prune VLAN 30 off this link, I could come in and say, switch trunk allowed VLAN except 30. Basically, allow everything except for 30 across this link. You know, again, if, if you're on a CCA lab exam, they're going to be very... I won't say very specific, but they're going to indicate, you know, allow all these VLANs plus future VLANs, or they might say just allow these VLANs. If they said something like just allow the current VLANs across this link, well, then I'd come in and say, you know, switch trunk allow VLAN 1, 30, 40, and 99. But here we're just excluding 30. So I want to show you what it does. If I say show run int E31, we're going to have a switch trunk allowed VLAN list in here with basically 30 just excluded. So you can see where they kind of cut 30 out. Now, what if we came back in and wanted to have 30 allowed on this trunk? A lot of people make the mistake where they come in and say switch trunk allowed VLAN 30. And what they actually just did, if we look at the running config again, is they actually just overrode the current switch trunk allow VLAN list. So if we look now, notice it went from this 
to switch trunk allow VLAN 30. What I should have done is use the add keyword to put 30 back in there. So if I go back and run the accept command again, and now I come in and say switch trunk allowed VLAN add 30, what we should see here if I look back at the running config, uh, where'd it go? We should see now that it is allowing all VLANs across here. Okay, so if I came in here and said switch trunk allowed VLAN 30 and 40, and we looked at it, and then I come back and add 99, and we look at it, we're gonna see that it appends 99 to the existing list. Now, like I mentioned, when NXOS was first released, if you ran the switch trunk allow VLAN command, it would say, are you sure you wanna do this? Are you sure you don't mean to use the add keyword? This might overwrite your existing switch trunk allow VLAN list. And I thought that was awesome, but after a couple different upgrades, for some reason that has disappeared. So whatever macro in the background was run into it to display that message is now gone. So now again, we're back to the, to the position where we have to remember to use the add keyword so that we don't overwrite the existing uh, switch trunk allow VLAN list. Again, just a little nuance, but we, we should be used to that from running in iOS. Uh, so NXOS at this point is, isn't any different. Now, the other thing we could do is we could change the native VLAN. Notif notice if I say show int trunk, it lists the default native VLAN is gonna be one. I could come in to say 3.1, I could say int E3.1, which I think I'm already in. I could say switch trunk native VLAN is gonna be 30. We're gonna get a little error message here in just a second, or at least we should. If I say show int trunk, we see that the native VLAN has changed to 30. Well, sometimes you get a little error message saying incompatible uh, local VLAN. Sometimes you don't, we're not, we're not getting it right now. But if we look at the other side, so which would be switch to port 1.1, one, one, oops. how that happened. Let's look in the log, see if we got a message that maybe we just didn't see. Come on, any day now. There we go. We'll scroll down to the bottom here. See, should have said last 10, shouldn't I? Almost there. I thought, no fun scrolling. It's actually control C, show log last 10. <laughs> Let's see if we got anything. No. So there's no indication currently on this side, unless, nope. Yeah, so nothing happened this time. And like I said, sometimes you'll get a little error message saying, hey, you're, you have an incompatible local VLAN. But we, we basically changed the native VLAN on port 3.1 on the 7K side to 30, whereas on this side, if we said show in trunk, we're gonna see that it's still one. So again, you would be susceptible to a VLAN hopping attack in this case. If you had something come in on VLAN 30 that needed to cross this specific trunk, it would basically flow across you know, out 3.1 untagged. And when it got to switch to port 1.1 on ingress, they'd say, oh, this is an untagged frame. It belongs in VLAN 1. So again, this is a big part of the reason why we want our native VLANs to match on both sides. So in this specific case, I'd want to come in and I'd want to say interface ethernet 1.1 switch trunk native VLAN is going to be 30. And again, that's best practice to have your, your native VLANs matching on both ends. IOS, when you, especially with CDP, you're gonna get some error messages saying you have a native VLAN mismatch. Uh, I typically, during you know, a, a new turn up, would go out there and create a dedicated native VLAN, like 999 or 888. I try to make it something easy to remember, and I make every trunk different, um, you know, 
different than VLAN 1, again, which is the default, to this new VLAN that I've created, like 888 or 999. And I just find that kind of helps keep me in order, and it, it's kind of in line with best practice from removing VLAN 1 as a native VLAN on your trunk links. You could also come in and actually tag the native VLAN, and that's something that, again, you can do on a switch-by-switch -switch basis. It's a global command. We could come in here and say VLAN.1Q, tag native, and, and this is going to tag the native VLAN. So rather than sending it across untagged, we're going to send it across tagged. And, and I typically treat this like auto cost reference bandwidth for OSPF or IS to IS, you know, fabric path. If I start changing this, I change it everywhere in my topology. So if, if one switch is, is tagging the native VLAN, I try to just make all my switches tag the native VLAN. So I'd come into all these guys and I'd say VLAN.1Q tag native. And, and again, this is kind of a security thing. If, if you are thinking about all the different attack vectors and VLAN hopping is one of those attacks that you're kind of worried about, then tagging the native VLAN can kind of mitigate that risk because now you're not susceptible to that basically double tagging or VLAN hopping attack that you might have been worried about. So we'll come over here and do the same thing. We'll say VLAN.1Q tag native. And now all three of these switches are tagging the native VLAN. Again, this is going to be done on every port. So this is a global command. Every port is now going to tag the native VLAN if it's, if it's trunking. This, again, is something that you want to watch out for because I have seen it to where some ESXi hosts are relying on this untagged native VLAN for, say, their management traffic because a lot of people won't go in and put a, a VLAN tag under the VM kernel port within V you know, ESXi or vSphere. So you, you want to kind of do, do your due diligence and check over your topology, see if anything is relying on the native VLAN like specific hosts, which that's usually the case, and remediate those, have them actually start tagging, and then you can go back and, and start tagging the native VLAN on all your different trunk links. So again, just some different things that we can kind of play with with regards to trunks, but for the most part, the similarities are, are there between iOS and NXOS. So if you've done trunks in iOS, it's, it's no big game changer to come into NXOS and start provisioning trunks right off the bat.